Godsmack by Diana Lanham. Fade in. Interior Seattle, Tyler Carter's condo, hallway, night. Sam Landers, 35, a charming go with the flow veterinarian, knocks on the door. The door opens and a pretty Chinese woman smiles up at him. Dr. Tyler Carter, 35, is Sam's longtime girlfriend. Hey, handsome, right on time. Interior Tyler's condo, living room, night. Sam stands near the fireplace chatting with his friends. Ritu, 30s, a vivacious female. David, 40, a conservative financial analyst. And Martin, 40, David's lively husband. A few feet away, two men stand watching Sam. Although they're in the middle of the room, the other guests move and talk around them as if they're invisible. Archangel Gabriel, 40, dark and brooding, looks slightly bored. The perpetually smiling Archangel Michael, 40, is clearly enjoying himself. Drinks in hand, the archangels glance around, taking in the party. Gabriel takes a swig of his Guinness, then eyes Michael's sugar-rimmed martini glass. What the hell is that? Michael swirls the liquid in his glass, then takes a sip. He smiles indulgently. Lemon drop. Gabriel rolls his eyes. Interior, Tyler's condo, kitchen, night. Tyler stands at the counter, setting out more food. She is watching Sam surreptitiously while he chops up a pretty co-ed 20 is in the living room. Martin saunters in, pours himself a glass of wine. He sees Tyler watching Sam. So, tell me again why you two aren't married. I'm not having this conversation. Is he still living with his mother? Yes, but it's not like that, and you know it. Margot's totally cool. That place is just too big for one person to manage. Sam feels guilty leaving her out there by herself. Blah, blah, blah. Sam better bust a move or someone else is going to snatch you up. I'm just saying. Tyler laughs, but when Martin turns away, her smile fades. She looks back at Sam, frowning. Interior, Tyler's condo, balcony, night. Sam, Tyler, David, Martin, and Ritu are seated around the balcony enjoying cocktails. Behind them, Gabriel and Michael lean against the railing, drinks in hand. Again, the others are oblivious to their presence. I only listen to audiobooks when I commute. <coughs> The news used to make me so depressed I had to drag myself into work. I remember when my dad quit watching the news. He couldn't take all the crap going on, and that was 20 years ago. Wouldn't it be great if we woke up tomorrow and all the evil shit was just gone? Like no ISIS, no school shootings, no guy beating his wife and kids to death. Behind him, Gabriel and Michael exchange a look. What about all the people living in the gray areas, the ones feeding the world's addictions, polluting the planet? Having sex with farm animals. Totally fine, as long as no farm animals were killed or harmed in the process. Oof. I thought you were a goner. Whatever. I just think you need to clarify what constitutes evil. How bad do you have to, have to be to get God smacked? Michael leans over, whispers into Sam's ear. Free will. Sam speaks Michael's words as if they were his own. Free will. God gave us the ability to choose whether we're going to do good things or bad things. So I say evil is as evil does. If you act out evil thoughts and it causes death and mayhem, then bam, you drop dead. That's a lot of dead people. What happens to the bodies? Do they just mysteriously disappear or are they piled up everywhere? I'm thinking they just drop and pile up. Nice. How would people even react to that? It's not like anyone's going to know why there's suddenly all these dead people. If it was me, I'd think it was some kind of super virus and we were all going to die. The religious fanatics, my mother, they think it was an act of God. Okay, so no game. Which one of us will be dead by morning? Point of view drifts back to Gabriel and Michael. Gabriel holds his beer bottle out to Michael. Game on. They clink glasses. Game on. Interior, Tyler's condo, living room night. Sam lounges on the couch. Tyler comes in from the kitchen, plops down next to him. I saw you getting cozy with that co-ed. What was she, like five? Twenty-two, totally legal. I might have let it slip that you live with your mother. I wouldn't expect a call. Why are you so mean? So, what's the deal? Are you staying here tonight? Well, since you shut down my other prospects. Really? Well, maybe you'll be sleeping on the couch. I'm sorry, did you say shagging on the couch? You wish. I do wish. Tyler squeals in mock protest as Sam slides her closer. Interior condo, bedroom, night. The room is dark except for moonlight filtering in through the window. The light falls on the bed where a naked Sam and Tyler are locked in a passionate embrace. Point of view moves away from the bed to the nightstand. 
Tight on an old style clock, the hands adjust with a quick mechanical movement, landing on the stroke of midnight. Cut to interior angel sequence, midnight. A brief glimpse of two winged shadows, barely discernible in diffused light. Muffled voices speaking in strange tongues. Point of view from space, a dark shadow moves across the planet. Interior Tyler's condo, kitchen, morning continuous. Sam is in the kitchen, plopping fruit and milk into a blender. He flips it on, then scrolls through his phone as the contents swirl. His eyes widen in shock. Interior living room. Sam grabs the remote, clicks on the TV. On TV screen, local news reporter Anita Luce, 40, stands on a city street with a space needle in the background. Reports of mysterious deaths are pouring in from every corner of the globe. It started in Seattle just after midnight. Emergency centers flooded with frantic calls from people waking up next to dead loved ones. There are citywide reports of bodies on the streets, on buses. Back to scene. Sam clicks the remote, switches the channel. On TV screen, a reporter, Annie, stands next to a distraught South African woman, 30s. A news feed scrolls across the bottom, reporting live from Sueto, Johannesburg. Me and my sister, they, they kept us there. She points to a shabby building in the background. My brother owes money to that man. He threatened to kill us. He held my sister down. She, she was screaming, and then they fell. They all fell. Then everyone was dead. Back to scene. Sam stares at the TV in horror. Oh, my God. Fade to black. 